So I understand there's a decent portion of you guys who watch my content but don't do anything involving weightlifting. And that's that's fine. Some of you want to start weightlifting, which is great. Some of you don't really care for it, but you still want to watch my content, so that's awesome. I can't complain. This video and possibly the next video, I don't know how many of these I'm going to make. Actually, I definitely want to make one about programming and methodology, so there'll be at least one more after this. But this video is going to be about beginning weightlifting, how to start weightlifting, how to get in the proper mindset to be a weightlifter. Warehouses, pipelines, concrete walls have been ripped apart and hurled through the air like so many cardboard toys. So the first thing I want to talk about is something I say a lot to beginners, and that is have low expectations but set high standards. And it sounds kind of fucked up to say, don't expect much of yourself, but in essence, why would you expect a lot of yourself? You're a beginner. You're doing something you've never done before. A simpler way to put it is that low expectation is just the expectation of what's going to be on the bar. Relative to anyone else, relative to what you're capable, it's going to be a low weight. But a high standard just means a high standard of movement. And the standard of movement is perfect in the snatch and perfect in the clean and jerk. Now there are plenty of sources, including my channel, that can teach you how to snatch and how to clean and jerk. That's not what this is about. This is about how to be a weightlifter or to start weightlifting. Obviously, perfect movement isn't entirely possible for a beginner. But rather than thinking about higher weight on the bar, think about getting better movement. So this idea of trying to perfect movement rather than getting weight on the bar starts with the three A's. And the first one is auto-regulation. Once you've started to perfect the technique with just the barbell, you may add in some weight. After adding in weight, you, may, you might throw the shoulders back too early, you might lose connection to the bar after contact, you might get behind. All of these different things can happen, but they're a result of you putting on extra weight. The long and short of it is knowing exactly what point you were able to lift optimally. Then when you went beyond that point, you were lifting suboptimally. So that's the line where you need to auto-regulate. And so the next point is autonomy or trying to be autonomous, even as a beginner. I think the best way to describe autonomy is interest in the sport, right? So it's not just a passive thing. If you have a coach, this is much more important for you uh, because a lot of times you get your programming, you get your technical advice all done from your coach. That's where you can be a little bit more passive uh, in the way that you attack or approach your own technique. This is an individual sport. So that means you have to have a passion for it. You have to have some sort of interest in trying to optimize your movement. So autonomy feeds directly into 
auto regulation because you have to have interest enough to know what the proper positions are. You have to know what you're doing wrong so that you can auto regulate your training. And this leads to the, the final aspect, or the, the third A, and that's accountability. So if you think about auto-regulation and autonomy, those are things that are skills that you need to develop as well as just learning the lifts. And accountability feeds into this because if you just want to learn the snatch and learn the clean and jerk just to learn them, uh, well, then you don't really have to hold yourself that accountable. You can look up a tutorial online, probably one that I've done or, or one that someone else has done, and just follow those steps. There you go, you know how to snatch and you know how to clean and jerk. But if you want to progress, it takes another level of accountability. You have to um, be more conscientious about the way that you're training. You have to learn how to be autonomous, learn how to be, or, or to, how to auto-regulate your training. Then, if you want to optimize your training, that's a much higher uh, level of accountability that you need to hold to yourself. Once you reach that level of accountability, it's likely that you're willing to spend the money for uh, a remote coach or find a way to get to a weightlifting gym. So that's gonna bring us right back to where we started. If you wanna be a weightlifter, the best thing you can do is find a coach, find a gym to go to, and have that coach teach you the lifts and, and help train you. If that's too big of a commitment, that's totally understandable. From there, you would just want to learn the positions, the lifts, and basically do as much research as you can on the sport. Then, as you start to perfect your own technique, that's when you can learn to auto-regulate your own training. As your interest and your passion of the sport goes up, the accountability needs to go up as well. The amount of sacrifices you need to make will go up as well. I hope I've kind of painted a broad picture of how to get into weightlifting. The next video I wanna make is really the nuts and bolts of weightlifting. So like the, the methodology and the programming and how you can go from day to day to day of training. Hopefully this helps you guys and hopefully you like this type of content. If you do, press the like button, subscribe, and pay attention to the next video. Thank you so much for watching.